It's May 1st, which means we just completed our 30-day work from home challenge. Stay tuned for recaps and highlights. And at home with the sea today on Wandering Zen. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling, and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now, your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. You've reached the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 117. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Uh, it is May. How did that happen? Wow. It's, is this May Day? Is that what they it call is May it? Day. Day? And, and May I think Day. a lot of people are screaming May Day. Thank you very much. That's exactly correct. <laughs> Welcome back to the podcast, David Squire. We just and it's day 47 of our unofficial official account here on the WBNL podcast of quarantine or stay, we're not really quarantined, we're stay at home, sort of, right? Right. Okay. right. Uh, here in Nevada, we just got the <clears throat> extension to May 15th for stay at home for Nevada. I don't know what's happening in California. Have they announced anything yet? No. With a little bit of easing of, you can go golf now, some things oh. in parks. Uh, they're gonna let some retail open as long as you can do curbside service. So you maybe order it online and then you go pick it up. You go. I did hear it. today that Starbucks is gonna be opening up a lot of its stores again for uh, uh, curbside and for uh, you know pickup. No, no in-store gathering, but you know opening. The yeah, stores. I think that's the next phase. You know, you're sure. And you know that makes cool? sense. Do you know what's cool about this? It's, it's it's people are getting. You gotta love the creativity and entrepreneurs of entrepreneurs of bi- of small business owners trying to figure that stuff out. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. We're going to David. Let's talk a little bit. Well, all of us, all three of us here, sponsored a. 30 day work from home challenge. And we thought today we would sort of recap some of the highlights and some of the feedback we got from people who who uh, did that with us. So all told, we probably had, to, as, as it is classically, because everybody is excited about starting something. Uh, I think everybody has the intention of completing it eventually. But I think what we realized, here was the first lesson I learned, and then maybe you can share some, some thoughts. And Matt, let's just all weigh in as to what were your takeaways from this? So for me, I love the idea because we love creating content, but in hindsight, I think we created too much content, (laughs) right? Because what we did now in, in hindsight for the people in the moment, it was a lot. However, now that we've completed 30 days of content uh, and, you know, it's going to allow the people that this is the feedback I got from most of the agents that participated. We had 124 people signed up for the program about 80 plus people were in there the first week or two. And it kind of got down to the hardcore. Once again, 20% of people are in. Now it doesn't mean that more than 20% are interested. It's just that they, they figured, well, it's recorded. I'll get to it. But you know what the problem with that is? You never get to it. You know, it's like scheduling your time to do it, but, but what we're encouraging people to do. And by the way, it's not too late to actually get access to this. And in the show notes today over at WBNLpodcast.com, we'll have the link where you can go and register and get immediate access to the 30 days, 31, actually 33 days of content because we did two days of a pre-launch and we're about to lay out the checklist today as a bonus tip. Um, but but uh, I'll, we'll come back and talk about what we covered. But my in hindsight, it was a lot of content to put out. It was a, maybe a little overwhelming. However, we have an amazing 30-day program as a result. So that was Absolutely. my top, top takeaway. How about you guys? Um, I think, uh, honestly, personally, I had a great takeaway, which was it really caused me to, to plug into some of, the, some of the areas that I wasn't as strong as I needed to be. And so personally, I, I feel I grew uh, as a business owner from being part of this, this, uh, this whole process. And then the, uh, the other thing is that um, – I think what it has done for us, Jan, you and I have talked about this and Matt as well. Uh, I think what it's done for us is it's um, it's given us a jump or an advantage on welcome to the new world because what we're dealing with now is not going to go away. And so that, that was a real eye opener for me that um, as not only we, as uh, I said this throughout, well, not only we as professionals had were forced to adapt to this, 
Uh, however, the consumer as well has been forced to adapt to this. So as you know, as things change and evolve, I think we we were proactive and, and positioned ourselves to be in the up up in front. You know, it's it's funny because I heard both of you say this quite a few times over the month that these are all the things that we were talking about are things that people really should have have already had in their business, mm -hmm. but it wasn't the top priority and they weren't forced to do it. And now you are forced to do it. And what we laid out really was an incredible uh, program that really step by step walk people through the process. So mm -hmm. if you didn't know how to do it before, you certainly know how to do it now. And you're absolutely right, David. Um, this has, you know, the, the world has changed. So, you know, th this is the the new basic training program that anyone would, would would be a part of when they were getting into real estate now. So good stuff, yeah, it really was. To, to your point, Matt, the, and the checklist today will, will help everybody with how to adapt your business in a virtual world is really what the theme of this was. So, so becoming a master of Zoom was a big piece to this and a theme yeah. throughout. And as and Matt, I don't know, do you have some feedback on being the uh, controller of, a, of doing a Zoom <laughs> yesterday? Because Matt did the tip <laughs> yesterday. So so because I, I'm hoping you could do a personal story on that to help people realize how important it is to practice. Uh, no, it's it's funny because I had, I, I was- You've been in a million Zooms. I was a participant <laughs> in a million Zooms over the last 30 days. However, <laughs> I never really had control over one until yesterday. And even though I had heard the tips and even though I had, I understood fully what I should have been doing when you are in the spot of actually doing that presentation, you got your mind on a thousand other things, right? You're thinking about the content you're gonna be delivering. You're not thinking about the, mm -hmm. the technical, uh, functionality of what you what you're doing and boy oh boy oh boy thank god our episode was on editing video yesterday because <laughs> oh boy we did some little editing on it but there was a three minute gap in there of trying to figure out it was like the watergate tapes you know <laughs> figuring out uh, um uh, how to get my zoom to work so yes the whole thing is you need to practice every bit of this it's not mm -hmm. you know you need to hone your real estate skills which boy mm -hmm. i'll tell you both david and jan really brought home uh, some great tips last month on that but you need to do a little honing of your presentation skills and your technical skills as well in order to really be proficient in, in uh, virtual training or learning or counseling. Well, I agree with all of that. And uh, Jan, I want to add, you know, I, I, I am included in that group of people that were kind of forced to do this. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, so uh, you know, kind of like we coach, Jen, we coach uh, through activity, not through teaching and training, right? And so what was really cool about the way this was laid out and, and the experiences that we had was, was we had to use it. You know, we did, everything was based, the entire 33 days or whatever it ended up being was based on us mm -hmm. using the, we were immersed. So to Matt's point, we had to do, even you, Matt, you had, you know, so. Yeah. So I, what I love about, uh, let me share one other big thing that I loved learning, two, two things that I did for a takeaway. One, one was how powerful the weekly stats are. So David shared something he's been doing for years, and I've been in this business for years, but have never really looked at stats from the way you teach it, David. And I think that was a big one for everybody. Like I am to the place now where I can't wait to see the Wednesday stats yep, right. so I can see what the trends are. <clears throat> but I can understand the market from my perspective, but this just gives you a whole new insight to feeling confident about talking to people. And then when I had the stories from agents who shared the stats with their people who are a little bit more savvy about numbers and investors, those people were like, can I get the stats? Can I get the stats? Yeah. So we got like a new excitement for understanding the market because it's this has impacted our market so much. Everybody wants to know it, but everybody, not everybody, most people sit back and wait for somebody to tell them what's going on. That what you trained everybody on in the very, very beginning and we used throughout the course, the 30 days was right up front. I think we did it in day, pre-launch day two. Yeah, David was. went through his whole thing on how you get weekly stats for, El, for here in Las Vegas. But if you have, no matter where you are and where you're listening, you can take the same things he taught. If you don't use matrix in your local association or your local real estate, uh, area for MLS, you could learn how to do it. And oh my God, that is that was one of my biggest takeaways. And I know you get that kind of feedback uh, all the time. I think it was right? the biggest takeaway for just about everybody in the in the program because mm -hmm. it was something that made, I don't want to say it made stats fun, but it, it, made, stats, it made stats, um, uh, uh, 
a way to present them in a way that was uh, easier, I believe, really, for the agents to understand. And it had way greater impact than just throwing up a bunch of graphs and saying, hey, here's where the market's going. I don't know. It was really interesting to see kind of a shift because people were jazzed about it. And they were very excited about that whole when <laughs> it's Wednesday. <laughs> Do you know what I look forward to, David, is when, let's see, it'll be, it's now May 1 as we record this. It'll take about till May 10th or so for the LVR to put out the stats for April because the stats for April were 100% uh, we're in stay home status. Mm -hmm. And we have been watching those numbers. So now we'll be able to kind of go because we sort of can, it's not that you can always predict exactly what's going to happen, but you can see week to week a trend then it makes even more sense to look at those monthly stats and it makes you want to continue to carry on and see what you think is and prognosticate a little bit about what's going to happen next based yeah, on week to week stats. This, this, this week's numbers are an example of that. And so, you know, the, the, what I love about those numbers is, you know, we, we, it's just the raw basics, right? To, to your point, Matt, graphs and charts. And I mean, it would, it's cool to have graphs and, and everyone has access to numbers. However, it really is a simplistic approach to understanding the key metrics that we as professionals which 95% of our industry do not understand, even mm -hmm. though they say they do, mm -hmm. no offense. However, um, having a real understanding of the key metrics that are affecting buyers and sellers the most in our market, right? And that means pricing, that means inventory, all those things, right? So, but, but uh, to, to your earlier point, Jan, we, so this last week, or this week's numbers, we had a spike in under contracts, didn't Which we? Not? So exciting, yes. So, so we know, because we look at these numbers every week, we know that either one or two things is gonna happen, either maybe next week there's gonna be a little less because there's an offset or, you know, or, or, or maybe next week they're a little bit higher and that looks like what we're you know, going in the right direction. And another thing we can gather by understanding what went under contract last week is approximately, how many will close in 30 to 45 days, right? So it does really allow us to, you know, to really predict trends or, or mm -hmm. elite activities. That's right, because you can, you can look at what was in escrow, you know, mm -hmm. about 30 to 45 days, you take a little factor for fallouts, uh, for deals that fall out, and there you go. And we're just pretty awesome. As, and by the way, just as another teaser for people to go sign up that are not getting all this, that's that weekly stat for all through the month of May, we're going to have that those stats up there as a download. So you don't even have to go do the work to go do to go pull the stats, which David did in a tutorial. He showed you exactly how to do it. And then, frankly, we did it like three times. We went over that stuff three times totally. to help people really make sure they understood it. Um, and Matt, did we get the weekly stats yesterday? Because I asked no, from I don't David. Think I sent them to you guys. I'll, I'll send those uh, just after. Okay? All right, very good. Because that you can get the latest stuff. And by the way, that 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 spreadsheet goes back to 2018. Mm -hmm. yeah, it goes back fantastic. to 2018 here for Las Vegas, so you can really see a trend. Uh, and we're and we're. That was a, that was an important point, um, and, and especially in understanding this, that was a peak that we experienced. Uh, it was the, that was the. the, the pretty much the strongest seller's market we had had since the downturn, right? Mm -hmm. So it was a great start point. And then there were some trends that happened and you can watch since that May of 18, mid May of 18, you can literally go down the list and see what happened. More inventory, less inventory, mm -hmm. seasonality, all mm -hmm. those. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, so that yeah, was yeah, a big I think highlight. Another, I think, another, oh, I was gonna say, I think no. another yeah. big yeah. highlight for the, the month was the way that you were uh, you packaged both the the listing presentation and the buyer presentation uh, and how you actually do that virtual consultation mm -hmm. and, and the order which you in which you do it and to make it be more impactful for the buyer or seller right by using mm -hmm. actual visuals of what you're going to do it's so interesting that like you like I, like I said before that you you should have been doing this all along but you, in a way you do it on the way you do it online versus in person you can mm -hmm. give them so much I think more tangible visuals mm -hmm. of really what they're going to be able to experience during their throughout their transaction especially on the listing side i think the virtual listing presentation was a home run i you know what and so the four core classes that we taught for on these four mondays that were in april were how to actually do a virtual mm -hmm. buyer consultation so david and i and matt we role played that so what was different about I, i'm watching what everybody else is doing and everybody knows they need to switch this but nobody's actually showing people the how to do it um, and, and, you know, people did, did appreciate the fact that we actually, Matt was our buyer and we went through and did a buyer consultation. Maybe you were our seller. I don't remember how we well, did that. Or, buyer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so we, that's yes, right. Right, cause we broke it down because we, 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 David and I put together what we do in a buyer consultation and we actually demonstrated how to 
show that buyer uh, properties and how to set up something in the MLS and use Zoom to do all that. Uh, the next one was how to do a virtual open house, all the ways that you could do a virtual open house and we and how to promote it, how to get leads from it, how to follow up. The mm -hmm. third class was how to do a listing consultation. You can really list a home and never see it right now if, if you have to. Uh, or you could do all of that online with your sellers and then go see the mm -hmm. house or go with the virtual tour people mm -hmm. to take the virtual tour. We talked about how critical it is to have 3D walkthroughs and why you need Zillow and uh, how to determine if you have the right person helping you with videography because that is so critical. To your point, Matt, well before this, everybody should have been doing that, a single property website in the whole right. nine yards. Now it's a must. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to help you sell your properties going forward. And going forward, regardless of how long this takes, I think this is the way we're going to do business because it's effective. People are used to it. And then you go meet them. Like, why would you want to meet with a buyer, talk with them on the phone, do a zoom with them, qualify them that way, make sure they're serious, show them, get them down to the two houses they want to go see, then go show those houses. Right. You know, what's interesting because I thought to myself, I was thinking this as I was watching you guys go through these presentations, but also we had quite a few comments on this from agents throughout the month regarding pricing, either on the buyer side or on the seller side and how you can all like, I guess we don't have to keep saying this, but I mean, you know, always you can demonstrate what it is. But I think there is a certain mental shift that you have explaining something online versus sitting next to someone explaining that you cannot get what you want to get for your house. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think there is a weird thing. It's a, it, I think you feel more like you are in control when you're doing a presentation like this in a way than in sitting in front, in front of someone, because I think so many agents will go immediately to I'll cut my commission or I'll, I'll do something to, uh, you know, make sure that the price is what it needs to be or the money that comes out needs to, you know, it's interesting. Cause I, I just think that it was, that it was so much, more easy, easy to understand the whole pricing structure on either side when you're laying it all out here online. I, I just, it was a, it was a, an interesting thing that I wasn't really expecting to pick up during this last mm -hmm. thirty days. You know, it, it, in, in addition, and, and you know, to piggyback on that, Matt, um, you know, one of the things, one of the lessons I learned, Jan, early in our careers in training was, you know, in, in one of those appointments in person, you need to take control and keep control. Mm -hmm. and as soon as you lose control in that appointment, um, you're you're pretty much in trouble, yeah. right? And so the agent that does that well and, and shows value and connects with the people is the agent that's going to you know, have the buyer or the seller. Uh, however, what I've also found being a coach for so many years, and Jan, I think you'll agree, most agents, and I'm talking highly productive agents, don't really have a buyer consultation no. or a formal listing. No, that's the yeah. point. That yeah. Jan, you said it a, a ton of times. It, it's up here, right? Well, that's okay. That's good and well. And they've done very well doing that. However, what happens when you go up against someone who really has a presentation? That's the first question. And the second, and, and so to Matt's point, us doing it this way really gives us the confidence, right? So we put, to, we have to put together, we, we can't wing it on Zoom, no. can we? Right. Yeah. So we have to put together a formal listing presentation that gives us the confidence that absolutely gives us the control, right? That's not an yeah. issue. So, it gave it gives us such a competitive advantage to show value to our people and we can still connect with them that's the beauty of this and then you are like a rock star when you have practiced mm -hmm. and you've mastered zoom and you're showing them and you've got all the tech going and you're actually you're so you're talking to a seller and you're able to go let me show you exactly what we're going to do here's an example of my like my latest listing this is what we're going to do for you we're going to do this 3d matterport mm -hmm. tour let me show you how cool it is because you can demonstrate it better in this environment. And I do think there's something about what you said, Matt. It's like, it's, it's got the, it's not as quite as the intimacy of being right next to somebody in a room, but it is a little bit like that because you're still getting to, especially if you don't know who the people are, you're still getting to build rapport and know them, demonstrate your ability and your market knowledge. And that's all part of it. Everything was, let me talk to you what's happening in the market. So you have to, this is this what, if everybody once goes through this program, and, and this is why we stopped doing anything for May, because everybody needs time to go implement. The checklist I'm sending out today for everybody is go through and implement the things that you need to do. And guess what's gonna be on that checklist? Do you have your formal buyer consultation? Cool. Now, by the way, right. we actually shared a complete awesome buyer consultation that you could mm -hmm. download in PowerPoint and just customize. You don't have to go, you could take out what you don't like, add what you have, but to mm -hmm. your point, David, most people don't have one. Mm -hmm. So we have that, we have a listing presentation. We have all of the stuff. We did so many things in between. So the last class was on day four was, or 
week four was how to do a virtual seminar, how mm -hmm. to conduct buyer and seminar, buyer seminars, seller seminars. My mm -hmm. team, uh, the O'Brien Marabi team, we actually have done two of these already. And we're going to be continuing to do these every other week because the content stays out there on our Facebook and Instagram and we're, we're, we're driving traffic that way. So anyway, we had so much fun doing that, that, uh, there, that just, I really encourage you to go to our show notes. It's too hard to put up what the link is here, uh, because you'll need to go copy the link and get there, get it there. But, uh, you instantly have access to all the content and you can take your time and dissect it and, Go down and, and, and follow along and, and watch David and I coach you through how to do it and Matt because Matt had lots of stuff that he did in throughout it. In fact, he had the last tip, how to edit video. Everybody was asking for that. We threw that in as an additional Fantastic. tip. Fantastic. Uh, and that was, you want to start with that, go start with tip 30 and work your way backwards. <laughs> cool. Or right, anything else is learned, as lessons learned here? Because that's I think this is really what we wanted to talk about. It was exciting. You know, we're probably, David and Matt and I are going to do something mid-May to check in with everybody and uh, do a bit of a, of a, like, where is everybody and put it all together about running your business and uh, see where we go from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I, I, I had a lot of fun doing it too. That was, that's the other part. You know, we interacted well. Virtual happy hour didn't hurt either. Virtual happy hour. Now we did not record those. Okay. For everybody's best interest. However, uh, we may do another one of those. Maybe David and Matt, what we could put out there is that we will do a, uh, a group, uh, virtual happy hour at some point in May, just check in with everybody. And maybe one, one prior to that will Great be a idea. bit of a coaching session for everybody, a group coaching session for everybody. Great idea. Yep. All right. Thanks, David. Uh, I look forward to what we're going to keep working on uh, really with good. Matt and I, and we will have you be on our, you'll be on our podcast, I'm sure as a frequent guest, because we got a lot of good stuff to share with people going forward. Right. Great. Glad to be here. Thanks. All right. Have a great day. We'll, and we'll talk to you later. All right. Sounds good. Good stuff. Come take my hand and see the world around you. The time is right, just let the light surround you. And step by step, you feel it coming alive. The feeling deep down inside. The best memories are made when you take the road less traveled. Visit wanderingbutnotlost.com for some inspiration. Today on Wandering Zen, we are going to the central coast of California which is really one of my favorite places uh, that I've ever been, quite frankly. It's beautiful. Monterey Bay. Monterey Bay is actually exactly where we're going. Our topic today is at home with the sea. We are going to do a little virtual wandering through the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Uh, Jen, have you ever been there? To the bay, uh, I used to live in Marina, California when I was in the Army for three and a half years. I know so, that's yes. true. But you Monterey, know, Monterey, yes, of course. Monterey, yeah, Monterey, yes. But have you been to the Bay, the Monterey Bay Aquarium? Of course, I lived yeah, okay. there for three and a half years. Yeah, yeah. Row, I loved I know, all that so area. Awesome. The Monterey Bay Aquarium was open. Mile drive. Yeah, just, it's just beautiful. The whole thing, I just love it. I there's nothing that I don't love about Central California. Is and right. you know, if I ever had to pick a retirement place, it would be somewhere between. San Luis Obispo and Santa Cruz. Those are the, uh, that would wow. be my area of where I would really, really love to end up someday. Anyway, uh, the Monterey Bay Aquarium uh, opened in October of 1984. And what I love about the Monterey Bay Aquarium, although, you know, most aquariums and most places that are actually taking care of animals and wildlife are there because they're trying to preserve and protect the animals. But, but there's also an entertainment value to a lot of it. And, and zoos in particular, and aquariums in particular, earlier on, really were for more entertainment. They were for protection. The Monterey Bay Aquarium was actually uh, built uh, uh, totally on the flip side of that. It, its primary mission was always to protect and to preserve and to learn about the uh, animals in the local habitat there in Monterey Bay, which is just a treasure trove of sea life. Um, the Monterey Bay Aquarium had a hard time getting started. Uh, but once it kicked off, it was a pretty amazing uh, response that it, it got almost immediately um, from uh, from locals and then just people coming in and scientists and, and researchers uh, alike. Well, the reason why I wanted to really talk about it today is, you know, there are so many different places. There's so many different things you can do online to kind of get away while we're all sheltering in place. They have probably the best selection of webcams on their website that I have found anywhere all in one place. They have 
the kelp forest. They have a sea otter uh, webcam, one on the sharks, the open sea, uh, the jellyfish, the, um, uh, I got, well, there's a, the, there's a lot of birds in the area too, not just uh, mm -hmm. sea life, but uh, so they have just a great collection of webcams and they're fun to watch anyway, but if you're looking for some meditation time uh, while your shelves are in place, if you want to get away from the familia for a little bit, have a little moment of zen, a true moment of zen, just click on one of the webcams on the Monterey Bay Aquarium, which, by the way, all of our show notes are, uh, you know, over at wbdlpodcast.com or wanderingaboutnotlost.com. I have actually embedded a number of those webcams into our show notes today, but also you can just go right to the website as well. The, the jellyfish uh, webcam is mesmerizing. <laughs> Absolutely mesmerizing, yeah. and so is the sea, the the, the uh, kelp forest as well. When, when you walk into the aquarium, the kelp forest was one of the first things that they really built, and it and it was really many people said it could not be done. How do you replicate a kelp forest in a man-made environment? They didn't think that it could be done in the first place, and it certainly wouldn't be sustainable. But after all these years, it's still there. The 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 uh, aquarium that it's in is huge. It's a three-story tall aquarium, and they have a huge filtration system that brings the water in from Monterey Bay into the, the aquarium itself. You could literally sit there and just watch that, that kelp undulating. I could do it for hours. As a matter of fact, when we went to the aquarium, uh, we did exactly that. We sat right there and just kind of watched that. I, I, it's really, it's it's an amazing thing. So um, I, I just can't wait to get back up there and go to the aquarium again. It's so funny. It's been a while since we've been there. Actually, it's been over 10 years since we've been there. And um, uh, it would be neat to get back. There's there's been a lot of exhibits that have opened up since we were there last time, but it's a fantastic place to go if you're in the in the area. What what are your memories of the aquarium, Jana? Do you have anything that you, you know, look at? There's, there's that outside part too. There's some cool outside part where you Absolutely. can see the seals and the sea lions. I remember that, and that's pretty cool. But it is the it's the uh, the tanks and being able to go and for the kids, it's being able to have the little tide pools and so forth. But have you been watching all those? Is that part of what you've been seeing? Yeah, right now? it's amazing, oh, and they they do a, a uh, they do two. Uh, feedings twice a day. I think at eleven thirty and at one thirty, where they feed the sea otters, and they, I think, uh, I don't know if it's penguins. I forget what the they're. The otters are yeah, cool in my what they're, what they're actually feeding, but it's cool. So they have a, a time where you can go onto the webcam and you actually watch the trainers come in, and it's an area ah. thing, and they talk about it. And I mean, it's really, you know, if you have kids and you want to give them a little bit of a, you know, doing your your home teaching, they have some little courses on there that you can go through, and a lot of activities for kids that are, you know, surround the 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 sea life there so it's a it's a really cool website to go to and, and really feel like you can kind of get away and so much to learn i thought it was great I, laura and i happened to be up in that area on thanksgiving day one time and we were like what are we going to do for thanksgiving dinner and we thought you know what stay well that was our plan but we went to the um uh the aquarium and had things we didn't even go in the aquarium we went to they have a really nice restaurant there at the aquarium we went in and we had full-on thanksgiving dinner at the Mon monterey bay aquarium it was freaking awesome you know i mean that's the weirdest thing hey what do you do for thanksgiving mm. hey let's go to the, let's go to the aquarium it was cool. <laughs> yeah. the first time we were at that aquarium years ago i think it was back in 90 90 or 91 was the first time we were there I will never forget this moment. We, Laura and I say this to this day. There is this. There was this tank. I'm not sure if it's still there anymore. That it was a round cylinder that kind of went from floor to ceiling, and then you know the the tank was in the middle, and it just had schooling fish in the the thing. Uh, hundreds of little tiny fish swimming around. Well, come to find out, they were sardines, and and sardines school, and they were swimming almost like a little tornado-y kind of uh, yeah. pattern. And it was it was mesmerizing as well. It was equally as mesmerizing as the kelp on these fish swimming around in a circle was and then this kid who must have been i don't know 10 or 11 years old it, we were just staring which is two of us he came up he stood there in front of that and he looked on and looked up there he must have stood there for like a minute or two and then he says see you on the pizza dude and he turned around and walked away <laughs> he wasn't even talking to us it was a, we i think we must have laughed for half an hour it's like wow that was really obscure but very, very funny. Oh see, on, see on the pizza, dude. If we ever see a sardine, oh. we always say that. 
That's funny. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to make this a short Zen today because the whole purpose of this is really just get to that website, go to those webcams and make it a part of your routine. Because I'm telling you, if you're having a stressful moment and you go watch one of those webcams, really any webcam it's in, of nature can lower your, your stress level. But go to watch those. It's mesmerizing. And like with everything, it's always different. They have a sea turtle webcam too, which is really cool to see every once in a while a turtle come swimming by faceting stuff. So there's a lot of places you can go, a lot of things you can do to feel like you're getting out, even though you are still uh, sheltering in place. Okay, but hold on. for yeah. Before we close for our show today, uh, for those of you that are watching, okay, on... Um, Hold on, I really want to be able to show this because I went to the Be Live camp. I want to be able to see. I went there because I have it pulled up right now and I am going to, here we go, Cole. I'm going to share it because now I'm super inspired to go see this. So let me show it. So in case you're not seeing here, let's go, the, let's see what how it looks a little bit better here. Uh, there's no easy way to make it look here. I'll stay with. I'll stay with this view, right? So cool. yeah. now what, so if you're, if you're watching the, the thing here, so what, what do you think is the best one? The jelly the, the cam? Jelly cam or either one of the jelly cams are just, I so there's a jelly cam. It. There's a coral reef cam. Yep. Uh, oh my God, there it is. And it's, yep. here we go. I'm going live on it right now. Oh, oh, oh wow. It's so beautiful. Oh my God. And you there's music. That, you there's see, music. Yeah, exactly. It's this was, I think through YouTube. <gasps> this is awesome. Yeah. I'm just going to have this up in the background. I'm telling you. Okay, great it's, tip. It's man. a very wonderful thing. So if you're not if you're not doing something like this on a daily basis, you need to start. You know, last the last couple of weeks we talked about the national parks and gave you a lot of national park web cams to, cams to go to. Uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium, I think, might have everybody be. It's a uh, they're all beautiful. Wow. Uh, go to the kelp forest real quickly if it's on there. Where the kelp forest it? cam. I'm, yeah. I'm pulling it up the kelp forest cam right now. Let's get. Go. Ooh, what's in here with the kelp? There's all kinds of fishies in there with. The oh, kelp. look at the big view of the. Oh, yeah, this is making me realize of, of having some memories of being in the aquarium. Yeah. And by the way, the sardines were right across from the kelp can because around uh, the kelp um, exhibit, I remember that. So, oh, look, it's just zooming in now. Okay. Wow. Cool. All right. Well, way cool. All right. So now this is a, this is a stay home tip. And let's see what else you really moon jelly cam oh wait a minute i saw otters can you really see otters yeah see otters? I've, i was on this this yesterday and you actually you know it's always you know whatever animals have to be going by the cam at in a particular time but yeah it was pretty cool oh man okay. so right now, see there's no jellies coming through so you have to but if you do, if you if you just leave it up there let me go to the sea otter cam last one sorry now i'm really obsessed with this this is brilliant <laughs> well that's good <laughs> That's All right. Purpose. Oh, there we go. We're out here in the sea otter area. I'm just leaving that. You know, I can see them over there. Yeah, their oh, sea otter program actually was. There's uh, two over here playing or just doing their thing. Awesome. The sea otters that they don't actually release back into the wild for whatever reason, they use as uh, surrogate parents for sea lion or for little sea otter pups that come in. So it's oh. kind of cool. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. But most of their uh, sea otter program is about. Uh, uh, rescue and re-release and, and repopulating Ooh. other uh, areas that have been devoid of sea otters. There's some few of them. Okay, I'm very flowers. excited. I'm very excited about this tip. <laughs> just shared it here for you all watching. Well, awesome. Those Thanks. of you listening are going to have to go to Monterey. It's just MontereyBayAquarium.org. Yep. That's right. And Jan, thanks for bringing that up. That that brought a little uh, life uh, to our, our story here. So remember everyone, be forever wandering that lost. You can stay in, but you can still get out. You know, we're going to get through this together. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Well, that's a wrap for episode 117 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. All of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. John O'Brien, you know, David Squire has is, is really been fun to work with the last 30 days. And the content and the comments we've gotten back from that program have been pretty... Uh, uh, outstanding. Uh, very exciting about Very excited that we did it, and we really encourage everybody go check out the show notes at 117 at wbnlpodcast.com to get the link. You can still join. It's 100 percent free. There's no obligation. There's no tricks. Or we're just 100 percent giving this out to you to help you uh, pivot your business to being a virtual agent. It's worth it. 
Uh, you can have access immediately to everything, and um, most of our folks that went through it are, are taking the next month to actually digest and really put it all into practice because I yes. think it was that good. I was very proud of it. May is implementation month. May is implementation month, but I just got to say, on the Zen, thank you for sharing the Monterey Bay Aquarium. I, I have to figure out how to get a second camera, I mean a second screen up. And I think I'm just going to have that always up. I'm, I'm watching sea otters as I'm finishing up our segment right here over on the other part of my screen. It's mesmerizing, but I think the jellyfish are going to be the most fun to watch. It's I funny you should say that because we have an old computer that really doesn't do much uh -oh. anymore. But that might be a great thing to hook up that other computer and just have that up all the time. Just use that. Oh, well, the sea otters have a bath. Okay, so hold on. I'm going to put it back up. <laughs> the, sea, the sea otters have a little area up here. And this guy just got in and he's playing around in that one now. Like, what's that all about? Like, he just went swimming around there like it's his bath. Like, why is he in there? That's cool. So, there's a lot of little sea otters in this area. I, I think, I hey, I think that the uh, uh, daily feeding is in about an hour and a half, Jan, so you're going to have to continue okay. to watch. I'm going to leave it up. I'm leaving <laughs> it up because it's pretty cool. So, do you see a, does a person actually come into this enclosure? Or what do yeah. they do? Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> I don't know if it's a not exact enclosure. Probably is. All right. Well, anyway. That was a great find. Go go share that with your family or do your science lesson uh, at home, parents no slash kidding. teachers. And a uh, number of things. You know, Ma, Sweet Pea's already got this on her list. She's doing national parks right now, but when she gets off of that, she's going right into the uh, ocean uh, life. Uh, I love it well. because there's even an area for educators. I bet there's some lesson plans there or are. things in here to do or activities to do with kids. All right, very good stuff. All right, everybody. That is our episode 117. We'll see you next week. We'll see what... We'll see what May brings. We'll see where we'll continue to give our updates on what's happening, how we're all adapting and thriving in uh, this new world we live in, and uh, continue to bring great, hopefully continue to bring great content. And we'd love to get your feedback. Tell us what you'd like to hear, uh, what kind of stuff we can cover here, who you'd like us to speak to. And thanks for watching and listening. And be forever wandering, uh, but not lost, and stay safe, everyone.